Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The request first off, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha qila lahu tafassahu fil majalis fafsahu yafsah illahu lakum. All those you, all those of you who believe if you're asked or requested to make room in the spaces which you sit, make room so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make room for you. So please, we need everybody to move forward. I see multiple gaps. The masjid is already full. So if everybody can please move forward, even if it's just a little bit. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, He's speaking to us, to each and every one of us, inshaAllah. So let's make space for our brothers, inshaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. May He make space for you, inshaAllah. We have brothers standing at the back trying to get in. <coughs> Please, brothers, wherever you can make space, any gaps that are ahead, we have a lineup of brothers that are coming in, and we expect to continue to have this influx. Alhamdulillah. Secondly, um, a request with regards to the annual fundraising tonight. Alhamdulillah, we're in the last. 10 days of Ramadan. Yes, Hashfat is in the back. He's again, he's asking, please move forward. He's having, he's having a little bit of an issue coordinating. And so if we can just fill those gaps and ensure that there's no open gaps, then we don't have to continually ask. And especially during the khutbah, we don't have to ask. On that note, during the khutbah, there's been some uh, requests from some of the brothers that if anybody is speaking during the khutbah, please refrain from doing so. You don't want your jum'ah to be invalid. So please refrain from doing that. But again, they're asking us in the back because they're really just trying to coordinate and accommodate. May Allah bless you, inshallah. So tonight, inshallah, uh, after Isha, after Isha, inshallah, there will be uh, fundraising. And it's specifically going to be around without any general details. It's just for the operations of this masjid. Our community is growing. We need to ensure that we're taking care of the operations. Things are increasing in price in order to maintain. So please, the request from our chairman, Brother Muhammad Shalana, and the request from our president, Brother Shahzad Rahmatullah, is please come prepared and please spread the word so that we can have a successful fundraising event tonight inshallah and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, increase your wealth any sadaqah that you give you're guaranteed not to lose anything from it it will increase and increase inshallah so please spread the word, make the intention and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept Again, we have brothers standing at the back. I see some of the rows over here. Even if you just move up half an inch, once you stand up, you're going to come closer together and they'll fill in the rows. But if you just come up a half an inch and each row is going to give a fair bit of space at the back, inshallah. Thank you very much. Jazakallah.
you want to walk down the rows? Do you want to just take a look down the rows if you see any spaces? Again, brothers, please, we are having brothers standing at the back. So please take the direction of our brothers that are standing up and give them, give them some spaces. So I see a gap over here, a gap over there. Yes, please move up down the middle and show up. Uh, on the right side, I see some gaps. Please, if anybody, just make a little bit of room. Inshallah, at some point, once we're full, we're going to close the upper uh, masjid area and send people downstairs, but there's brothers standing at the back, and honestly, we need to make room for them.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة الحمد لله الذي أنزل الكتاب ويسره وخلق الإنسان وعلمه وسن الدين وشرعه وبسط الرزق ووسع وخلق النور فشعشع وأنار النجم فألمعه وخلق الليل فعسعسه أحمده حمدا يليق بجلاله وجماله وكماله وعظيم سلطانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى عليه الله خير صلاة صلاة وسلاما طيبين وطاهرين وكاملين وأتمين على صاحب الوجه الأنور والجبين الأزهر محمد بن عبد الله سيد الخلق أجمعين ثم أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا أما بعد Among the five pillars of Islam I would like to share one pillar with you I would call it as Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid calls it the most neglected pillar of Islam which is الزكاح Now all the five pillars that we all have believed in faith in الشهادتين Believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only God and Muhammad is the messenger and when you say it It is recommended and mostly all people who come to the fold of Islam they come at the masjid They say a shahada and then they start learning the deen through the brothers So it's something you do in public And it comes also a salah which is a man has to do it among people which is also in public and fasting is also would be happening around your family and around your 
your neighbors and around people. And there's something we all do it in gatherings. And along with that, Al-Hajj. But then when you are holding your back account and you're doing the calculations and how much you have in savings and how much you have in loans and in debts and doing all that calculation and getting 2.5% out of it, all that process from A to Z, it's only you are the one who does it. No one's going to access your bank account and does it for you. And this is why zakah comes in hand to be connected mainly to faith. It is not just a matter of Islam. It's not just the one pillar of Islam. As we understand it, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects it to the matter of faith that if you are not applying the zakah and fulfill it fully, you're a disbeliever. Allahu Akbar. How come? That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. The moment you open surah, open surah al-Fussilat. Surah al-Fussilat. Surah Makkiyah. It was revealed in Mecca. And in Mecca, there were not so many obligations were revealed to believers. Yet, zakat was among the first ones that were ordered, ordained. The believers were ordained, ordained to give. Why? Because one of the main missions for Islam is to reduce the gap between the poor and rich. That's why zakat was always there, in the first of the line. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Fusilat, He says, وَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ They owe the punishment, the hellfire. For the polytheists, al mushrikeen What description that Allah provides to those mushrikeen? The first and the only one that He gives in Surah Fussilat, الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ Those who do not give the zakah. And the only way they did not do the zakah, because they didn't have a faith and a belief in the afterlife. In the result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues this verse. He says, الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ they're denying the day of judgment. And probably that's the main reason why they're underestimating the matter of zakah. Because, because they don't believe in that day of judgment. We just spoke about that three, three nights ago. In a, in a very short talk, that this sunglasses of al al akhir it would change the way you look at realistics in dunya. That, that glasses, that there is a day of judgment, not everyone has it. So many people are blinded by the glasses of dunya. But the moment you wear the sunglasses of akhirah, you have a different vision. You want to give zakah right away. And we mentioned that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu himself had it. And the Sahaba, they were just generous in a very, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an insane way. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq would give it blindly. And even when they die, they are afraid that they might be lacking. They might be one, two dollars that they missed out. This is why you find, even at the last, the last minutes of your death, of the, of the death, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq comes to Aisha radiallahu and tells her, Ya Aisha, إِنَّ لِي بُسْتَانًا أُهْدِيَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ بَعْتِ بِنْ بَيْتِ بَعْتِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فِي الْقَلْبِ مِنْ هُشِيْنَ I have a garden that I gave to you a gift previously. It was given to me as a gift from Bayt Imam al-Muslimin. So he owns it. It's a gift. That's his own halal money. And he has already given zakah from it. But then he told her, فَهَلْ تَعْلَنِينَ أَنْ أَرُدَّهُمْ لِبَيْتِ مَا الْمُسْلِمِينَ I don't want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm still owning this garden. Would you allow me to take this garden back from you and give it back to Bayt Imam al-Muslimin? And he died owning nothing. Aisha radiallahu anha herself, she says, تُوفِّيَ عَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَمَا فِي بَيْتِي سِوَى شَطُّ وَشَعِيرٌ Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died in me and the only thing I have in kitchen is half a bread or half a wheat, شَطُّ وَشَعِيرٌ And keep in mind, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not poor. Don't let anyone fool me around and tell me Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was poor. Absolutely not. He was one of the most successful businessmen in Mecca, tradesmen. And he was married to the richest woman in Mecca, Khadijah bin Khuwaylid. And when he, came, when he moved to Al Medina and he got busy with the da'wah, Allah saved his wealth and saved fifth of the spoils to him. وَعَلَّمُوا أَنَّ مَا غَنِبْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَأَنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُسَهُ وَلِلْوَصُولِ So any battle he goes out for, fifth of the spoils goes back to him. But again, the sunglasses of the Yom Al-Akhir, that anything comes to him, goes on the other hand. That's how we looked at, at the matter of zakah. And those who don't give zakah, they have two buggles, two flaws within themselves. 
I will share them with you and, and wrap up this whole plan, inshallah, not to take it longer. And we're fasting. The first one, they don't have a trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't have trust that Allah is a razaq. Allah is the one who provides. The one who provided and the one who will replace them. وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُونَ Whatever you spend in something, Allah promises, He will replace it for you. Now they don't trust that. They, they see the 1,000 bucks is deducted from my bank, from bank account. How, how come it's replaced? It's not. But yet when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that He will replace you, He promises that in His own way of replacement, not your limited mentality of replacement. That replacement, you will see it in, in, your, in your obedient wife. You will see it in your righteous husband. You will see it in your children, whom you're not doing that much effort with them yet. They're coming to the masjid and they memorize the Quran and they're good. You don't know. You don't know where that coming from. Allah knows. That one crisis, you were just coming to Jumu'ah. You're supposed to have car accidents right in your way here. But because of that sadaqah, the whole yukhlifu. You're not aware of that. You don't know about the process that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for you just because of that sadaqah. And that is the tafsir of فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُ هُوَ يُخْلِفُ We embrace it, embrace it. Just give it and leave it there. And they don't trust as well that the wealth that they had is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not of their own. You don't own it, ya akhi. It's just made as an amana in your hand. Use it well and just leave this dunya. Go away. You see it. But so many people have the mentality of Qaron. Qaron did nothing wrong. The only thing that he did wrong, the only thing that we know from Quran, that he believes his wealth is from his own hard working, his own capacity, his own intelligence. He worked so hard for it. And he said, I've given this was upon my knowledge. And the result of that, we destroyed him and we destroyed him, his wealth as well. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you that this small portion of your money, if you did not give out, it will destroy the rest of it. The rest of your wealth. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. مَا مَنَعَ قَوْمٌ زَكَاةَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ See how the destruction comes. مَا مَنَعَ قَوْمٌ زَكَاةَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ إِلَّا وَمُنِعُ الْقَطْرِ not a single people would hold back, would prevent their zakah, except that Allah will hold back the rain above them. And if it's not for animals, they would not receive the rain. Now there's two things from this hadith you understand. The first thing, that there is a general goodness. You would say, so many people not get a zakah yet. It's snowing outside. It's raining. So yes, you, you're using some points to convince us with zakah. Absolutely not. The general goodness, Allah will keep it out there. But then, there is some private goodness in your life. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it away. And just as we mentioned, you will find the flaws in your life coming out of nowhere. The depressions, the stresses, the anxiety, they're just wrapping you up in dunya. Just as it will wrap you up in akhirah. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Prophet Muhammad said in the hadith that he said in Abu Ghayra in Muslim of Imam Ahmad that a man who withhold his zakah his wealth comes to him in the day of judgment in the shape of a snake in the shape of a snake and he sees it he is running away from it and it's running after him and he's afraid like what do you want from me? and it's calling him Ana kanzuk Ana maluk I am your wealth I am your money and that's the interpretation of the ayah that Allah mentions in Surah Ali Imran. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ يَبْخَلُونَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ هُوَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ بَلْ هُوَ شَرْءٌ لَهُمْ سَيُطَوَّقُونَ مَا بَخْلُوا بِهِ يَوْمًا بِيَانًا And that brings me to the second point why we don't give zakah. We don't have the fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they think they're, they're living in good life. But then Allah brings that thinking, that way of thinking in Quran. And he says, don't you think those who are greedy, who are stingy, and they don't give their wealth, it's good for them. It's absolutely the worst. It's the badness falling in them. So you tawwaquna ma dakhlu bi yawma qiyamah. Again, enjoy it in dunya. Don't give it. Keep it to yourself. But then I will meet you on the day of judgment. I will meet you on the day of judgment. And this wealth that you saved, it will round you up. It will squeeze you. 
سَيُطَوَّقُونَ مَا بَخِلُوا بِهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And this is the interpretation of the hadith مَا مَنَعَ قَوْمٌ زَكَاةَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ إِلَّا وَمُنِعَ الْقَطْرِ this is the understanding that a believer would have in dunya. Just get rid of it in dunya before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meets you in the akhirah. And you've got no choice but to be punished and burned with that wealth. Now no one, unfortunately, subhanAllah, when we look at ourselves in this Western world, the moment we deal with the government, doing our taxes, doing our claims, or, or any, any form of, of financials with the government, you go to your accountant and you try to manage all your, your bills all the, the debts, all what you, what you owe and what you owe to the government. You're trying to fix everything up and bring all the slips so you're not missing a penny. You want to do it all. And if you missed it, if you want to play, play around and play smart on the government, they will put some interest rates on you. It will pile up. They will lock your account. Your credit code is ruined. And they will ruin your life. Distraction. So you're just so careful about it. No, there's no such a thing that we can do in terms of zakat and that. Yet Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu, radiyallahu anhu, this man is a piece of intelligence, is a legend. We will share, inshallah, a four of series about him tonight at 8.15. I recommend you to see it, to see why this man is the first man granted to Jannah. He is well deserved for it, radiyallahu anhu wa abbah. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, some people who had a weak faith within themselves, they said, we will pray, we will fast, we will do Hajj and Umrah every year if you want, but we're not giving zakah. And they had their own dalil from the Quran. That what, what, what blew you away. They came to Abu Bakr and told him, Allah says in Quran, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا Take, O Muhammad, the speech is directed to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, take from the wealth a donation and zakat that purifies them. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu died. The whole order is denied. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu says, Wallahi. And that's where the wars, the war, the wage, the war was waged on them. Harb al was because of that one aspect. And even Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu came, Umar, the top man, came to Abu Bakr and told him, just let it go. As long as they pray and fast, let's go easy on them. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu said, Wallahi, لو منعوا عني عقال بعير كانوا يؤدونه على عهد رسول الله لقاتلتهم عليه. Wallahi, if they stop giving a robe, a robe for a camel, the cheapest thing you can think of, that they used to give at the times of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they stopped giving today, I will fight them until they give it back. He knew the importance of zakah. He knew that this is an ummah thing. It's not an individual thing. It's not your money. It's not your wealth. Come here, give it, give it, give it out. And that's an order. You don't go nicely on that. That's an order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if there is one thing to conclude is with our death, when we die. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings that scene when we go in that grave part, Hayatul Barzakh. And then you see all your deeds in front of you. A man will come and he will wish that he go back to life. If you just give me extra years, a number of years, why do you want extra years? Do you want to pray more? No. Do you want to fast more? Absolutely not. Do you want to do some couple of hajj and umrah there? No. Allah says, His only wish is going to be, that I will give sadaqah. That I will give the zakah out. And look at the word that Allah is using. As-sadaqah. Not atasaddaqah. Atasaddaqah is the normal form. That you just put your hand in your pocket, whatever you find, 20, 40 bucks, and you get this. Just give it out. And that's why zakah is called awsaqul nan. And this is why Prophet Muhammad and his descendants, they don't receive sadaqah and zakah. That's what he said. مَا يَنْبَغِي لِمُحَمَّدٍ أَوْ آلِ مُحَمَّدٍ why? They don't receive it. It is the dirt of your money and you give it out. <laughs> and the man here will not wish to give that 20 or 40 bucks. Allah says he will wish that he gives all his wealth. Not 2.5 anymore. That calculation is not in his, in his counting, no. All his wealth for a 
as Salihin, but it's too bad. It's too late. We have given you a good chance in 40 and 50 years to fulfill, to fulfill that obligation, and you didn't. قد قلت ما قلت فما كان من خطا فمني ومن الشيطان وما كان من صواب فمن الله وحده استغفر الله فاستغفره وتوب اليه ان ربي غفور رحيم. الحمد لله وحده الصلاه والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد. When it comes to zakah, people go in in three different groups. The first group, may Allah bless them, ya akhi. First group, the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers them with blessings, without counting. If you just set, Allah, it's, it's, it's a, good, a good exercise for us on a weekly basis, that you sit down and you start counting the blessings of Allah upon you. You write it down on a piece of paper, and you start going there. And then you ask yourself, what did you do that you deserve all those blessings? And the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers them with blessings, they give zakah without even any counting. And they give it. SubhanAllah, the other, the other day I was having a chat with the, uh, in one of the sessions with the young folks. And one of them said a line that was just stuck with me while I'm, I'm, I'm preparing this khutbah. He said, Shaykh, Wallahi, I wish that I reached the nisab. The nisab of the cast that we know, 85 grams of gold. That, that nisab, whatever it, it, it counts. So I can give this a cat. His wish is to reach that amount of money. It's just to give, to feel the pleasure, the pleasure of giving zakat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he does, he does it generously. It's not like there is ah, two dollars, let me cut that off on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now is the most blessed people, may Allah bless them, who give generously as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them generously. Second, the group of people who do give, but I give it with a heavy uh, heart. Like, should I? Like, why should I give zakat? What's the right of Allah on zakat? And those people are exposed to the danger that they would give zakat and it's not accepted from them. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Nisa. وَمَا سُرَةِ التَّوْبَةِ وَمَا مَنَعَهُمْ أَن تُقْبَلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَقَاتُهُمْ Hypocrites. The only thing that made their zakat is not accepted two reasons. إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ They come to pray while they're lazy. إِذَا لَا يَتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَانَةً وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كَارِكُونَ they don't spend except that they hate it, that they don't like it, they don't give it with a good heart. And that's a dangerous thing because they do give, they've already given the dunya out, but they didn't receive the akhirah back. And then the last group who do give here and there and here and there, but yet they don't have the intention that this is for zakah. And that's and, 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 and that's an important aspect that when you give the zakat al it has to go out with the intention of zakat al the, 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 the dollars or the, the 20 or the 50 or the 100 bucks that you give here and there, and then at the end of the year, you, you, you pile them up. And you say, Alhamdulillah, I give it already. No, it wasn't with the intention of zakah. So you come back again, so you don't lose it. At the end of this path, I'd like to remind myself and you that Prophet Muhammad has said that this is a serious, dangerous matter to us. To us specifically, as this ummah's test in money, لكل أمة فتنة وجعلت فتنة أمة في المال. Every ummah has a fitna, and the fitna of my ummah, of yourself, are in money, in wealth. So let's let's face that test with success to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And last but not least, to conclude this this lecture, the full talking with a little bit of action. Tonight, inshallah, we will have a fundraising for this case. And this lecture, wallahi, is only for the sake of the benefits, not because of this fundraiser. It's because I need the reminder to myself and yourself that this aspect is neglected of the faith and Islam. And this masjid, as everyone knows, alhamdulillah, and you can see the amount of energy, the amount of efforts that are being put by everyone working here at this masjid, by the boys, by the youth in the parking lots, by the organizing team, by the board members, how they're working hard just to provide the environment for everyone here to practice their ibadah at the best shape possible. And it's a responsibility on the shoulder of every one of us to support this masjid. Support it and show that you are supported to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tonight and every night. 
It's about showing that you're a supporter. It's not about you giving one million or one dollar. As Prophet Muhammad said, Rubba dirham, dirham. Sabaqa alfa dirham. Probably one dirham would beat you to Jannah before thousand dirham. It's about showing a support to this mission. And everyone knows about the visions and the expansions of the projects and developments that we're having at the masjid, we absolutely need your support for the jihad that we're doing at this masjid, the jihad of delivering knowledge, of ibadah, of maintaining the faith and Islam of the coming generations. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى زوجاته الأطهار وأصحابه الأخيار وعنا معه بعفوك وكرمك وجودك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم لك الحمد أن بلغتنا ثلثي رمضان اللهم كما بلغتنا ثلثي رمضان اللهم فبلغنا ليلة القدر اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر وجعلنا ممن صانها وقانها إيمانا واحتسابا فغفرت له ما تقدم من ذنبه وما تأخر ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقل الصلاة
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحق على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يغارون ويمنعون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 